In grade 3, I welcome you to a brand new English lesson and in today's lesson we are going to cover two objectives. First, we're going to learn how to identify kind of verbs and then we're going to review regular and irregular plural nouns that we covered in the previous lessons. So let's get started. Do not forget to pause the video for better understanding. Great, so I want you to open up your R&B books to page number 170 and read the first half of this page that talks about kinds of verbs. Now, let's read this together. A word that tells what people or things do is a verb. Words that show action are action verbs. So, any word that shows an action is called a verb. Some verbs do not show action. They are being verbs. So there, are, there is another type of verb that's called a being verbs. For example, the verbs am, is, are, was, and were are forms of the verb be. They tell what someone or something is or was. Don't worry. Let's look at the sentence and you'll figure it out. The players jump. So the word jump is your action verb and they are strong. So the word are here is your being verb, right? It tells about someone who is strong, like what are they? They're strong. So are here is your being verb. Perfect. So let's try to attempt these and you'll figure it out. Just remember this, am, is, are, was, ver are your being verbs and then any word that depicts a, an action is your action verb. Great, so let's try doing this. Now, identify the underlined verb in each sentence. Right action or being on the line. Let's try the first one. Tammy word hard for the race. Word hard. So that's a past tense of the work, the word work. This is an action working, right? Work, so I'm going to write action. This is an action verb, so I'm going to write action. Let's read the second sentence. She was a big runner. Here you can see that the word was, right here, is, hmm, it's not an action verb, so it's a being verb, right? Try the next one. Let's see if you can get it right. That's correct. Her coach taught her exercises. Taught is the past tense of the word teach. So this is your action word again. It's an action. Next, let's see what we have to do here in the second half of this page. Combine each pair of sentences. So you join them together. Use both verbs in the new sentence. Write the new sentence on the line. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is that we need to combine these two sentences and we use both verbs in the new sentence and write the new sentence on the line. So let's read the first one here. Jenna jumped four feet high. Jenna jumped four feet high. Here the word jump is an action, so that's my action verb. Jenna landed in the foam pit. So the word landed, again, is your verb, and this is an action verb. So I need to join these two sentences. As you can see, there's a repetition of her name, and I can replace that, right? Or I can do something else. So you can join these uh, sentences together like this. Jenna jumped four feet high, comma, and landed in the foam pit. So you join these words together, these sentences together, using a comma and and, okay? We've done this before. This is uh, you connecting your grammar to writing. Perfect. Let's read the fifth sentence, and I want you to figure out the two kind of verbs in these two sentences. Let's see if you can do it. Good job. Let's read this. The team ran around the track. The team was soon tired. So the first thing is that I can figure out an action verb right there. The team ran around the track. 
And in the second sentence, the team was soon tired. Um, was here is your being word. So here I've got an action verb. Here I've got being. Let's join these two sentences together. The team ran around the track and was soon tired. Good job. Let's try the last one. The coaches were impressed. The coaches were happy. The coaches were impressed and happy. And you can see that over here, the word were, were, we have two uh, being verbs here in these sentences, okay? So in this sentence, we have two being verbs. And you might be asking yourself, why didn't she put a comma right there? Well, the answer to this is that, as we know, that the only time we do put a comma before an and <clears throat> is when you have two sentences, two clauses. Uh, and right here, this is not a clause, so we're not going to put a comma right there, okay? Perfect, let's go to the next assignment, and it's a very easy one, I promise. Great, so um, after finishing page number 170, I want you to try attempting page number 167. I promise it's very easy. All what you need to do is review the regular and irregular plural nouns that we uh, studied uh, last week. So let me help you out with the first, and I'm sure that you're gonna get them done yourself. So all what you need to do is this, write the plural form of each singular noun in parentheses. So you can see that there are words too tiny, baby, and I need to convert this baby into a plural uh, form. So what am I going to do? It's a Y. Remember what I told you? That's correct. You need to remove the Y and add I and ES. So baby becomes babies. Let's do the second one together. Four long stories. So remove the Y, add I, E, S. Great, let's, now you're gonna do these three yourself. Super easy, 12 ripe, fresh red, eight cute, you do that yourself. Uh, let's do the second half here. Write singular or plural for each underlined noun. So the nouns, are, uh, the nouns are already underlined for you. All what you need to do is decide whether they are plural or singular. That's easy. Woman, look at the E. So woman, that's plural, men. Again, E, that's plural too. Jack wore a god to protect his teeth. That and the last two, you're going to be doing it yourself. And when you're done, don't forget to share your um, comments in the discussions Alright, grade three, so I want you to complete your work on page 167 and 170 and do not forget to leave a comment or ask a question if you've got one. Best of luck, grade three.